Okay. So in this talk, I'm going to talk about one small aspect of the first derivative test, which if you've seen the videos uh, defining the first, uh, describing the first derivative test, I already keep mentioning that, but I should just say it more clearly. So that is that for the first derivative test, you do not actually require the function to be differentiable at the point which you are interested in. So remember, first derivative test, what's the goal of the first derivative test? To figure out if a point is a point of local max or min. Okay, right? Yeah. And uh, w what types of points do you expect? Maybe points of local max or min? What's the first thing you do? You first for figure out all the critical points, right? Mm -hmm. Because any point of local max or min is a critical point. And then you check each critical point, you check using the first derivative test. That's sort of the rough idea of where you use the first derivative test. And what I want to say here is that the first derivative test can be applied or potentially can be applied to all the kinds of critical points, including the type of critical point where the derivative does not exist. Right? What are the two types of critical points? Uh, it doesn't exist or it equals zero. Doesn't exist or it equals zero. And the first derivative test can be applied to both types of situations. Now, the derivative doesn't exist also can have two types of sub-situations. So let me just describe the two types of sub-situations. So, so I'm going to take two two types of situation where the derivative doesn't exist and for each one I'm going to illustrate how the first derivative test may be applicable to those situations. Okay, so the first case is where the one-sided derivatives exist but are not equal. Can you give an example of a function where this happens, but you can still use the first derivative test to determine whether it's a local max or local min or neither? Well, I'll give you an example where it's a local min. So, so take f of x is absolute value of x. And the point of interest, the critical point of interest is 0. Now, what's What's the derivative of f at 0? It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. So, however, you can still use the first derivative test. How? Well, what's the derivative for x less than 0? What's the derivative of absolute value x? Let me make a picture. Maximum 1. So, absolute value x. So, on the left of 0, it's minus x. On the right of 0, it's plus x. Okay, so the derivative on the left of 0 is minus 1. And the derivative on the right of 0 is plus 1. Okay? Yeah. Now, it's also true that the left-hand derivative at 0 is minus 1. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the derivative at points to the left of 0. Okay? So, the derivative on the left of 0 is minus 1. plus 1 for x greater than 0. So what does the first derivative test tell you? Well, the derivative is changing sign from negative to positive. Okay, negative on the left to positive on the right. So you have a local what? Minimum. Minimum. Okay. So in this case, we were able to use, so it's not just the fact that we get a local minimum, but the fact that we were able to use the first derivative test successfully. So strict local minimum at zero. So we were able to use the first derivative test to figure out that you have a strict local min at zero even though the function was not differentiable. Okay, let me take another example. So the piecewise definition. Okay, 
here we have this example so and the point of interest is going to be c equals 0 now first of all this function is continuous at 0 right the left hand limit of the function is 0 the value at 0 is 0 and the right hand limit is also 0 because these piece functions sorry uh, i say yes yeah so the piece functions are both uh, continuous and they and they agree at the point where you're changing definition now what can you say about the about about the first derivative test what does that tell you well what is f prime on the left of zero two x let's f prime no, no it's this first definition oh so it's one. one so f prime is one on the left of zero okay and uh, and what's f prime on the right of zero no, no it's this definition two x so it's two x and that's positive for x greater than zero right oh. Yes. So the derivative is negative on the, is, sorry, so the derivative is positive on the immediate left because it's 1 and it's positive on the immediate right because it's 2x and x is positive. Uh -huh. So the derivative is not changing sign. Okay. So what can you conclude? It's not a local extreme. If you, if you think of the picture, I'll just make a picture, but it's sort of going to be increasing and then it's going to be turning, but it's still going to be keep increasing. But neither local max nor local min is what I meant. Okay. Uh, maybe I'll say that a little better. Nor are we here? Yeah. Okay. And uh, now let me just make a picture. So what will this look like? Well, it's going to look like like that. Okay. So it's increasing till the point. Then it's still increasing. It does turn, but it's still sort of going from one increasing thing to another. Okay. So. So that's good. Now these are both situations where the left hand derivative and the right hand derivative do exist. Okay. In the first case, in the first case, the left hand derivative is minus one, the right hand derivative is one. In the second case, the left hand derivative is one and the right hand derivative is is what? Two x. Well, at zero, it's zero. Zero. So these are situations where the, where the one sided derivatives do exist and are not equal, and you can apply the first derivative test. But you can sometimes also apply the first derivative test at points where the left hand derivative and the right hand derivative don't exist or one or both of them don't exist. Okay, so let me take a couple of examples of that. So. The first one I'm going to take is f of x is x to the two thirds and the point of interest is zero. Okay. So what can we say about this? Well, you can actually see that it's a local min at zero even without using the derivative test if you have the right yes. intuition. But but let's just see what, what this is with the first derivative test. So, well, first of all, what is the first derivative? It's two third x to the minus one third. Right? Let me just do it here. So, so for this function, f prime x is two thirds x to the minus one thirds. Okay? Right? And this is for x not equal to zero. Now what happens if you if you take x equal to zero? Well, neither the left hand derivative nor the right hand derivative exist. Okay, they'll both be going to infinite values. We'll see that in a moment, but neither of them will exist. Okay. What can you say about f prime on the left of zero? 
What's the sign of f prime for x less than zero? Hmm? It is negative. Negative. Why? Because x is negative. You are raising it to a power with the odd, odd numerator, odd denominator. So it preserves the sort of uh, sign. Okay. So f prime is x is less than zero on the left of zero. Where c is zero. The point of interest is zero. And f prime x is positive on the right of zero. So, the derivative changes sign from negative to positive. So, it's like decreasing then increasing. Okay. And the function is continuous at the point. So, you have a local maximum. Mm -hmm. Minimum. Okay. So, f has a strict local by the way, I, I think I said it for each of these, but you should remember to check continuity at the point. Okay, continuity is necessary. Okay, I, I checked, well, absolute value is obvious. This one I checked continuity, right? This one again, I, I just briefly mentioned it's continuous. So, F has strict local min. But continuity is something you do need to check. We'll talk about that in a separate video. Let's see. But the point of taking this example was that in this example, the left-hand derivative and right-hand derivative at zero don't exist. Okay, because you look at the expression for the derivative, then as x is approaching zero from the left, this is going to go to minus infinity, right? And as x is approaching zero from the right, this is going to go to plus infinity. What's the picture going to look like? Like a bird. Like that. There's a technical term for that. This this type of thing is called a vertical cusp, right? Mm -hmm. If you haven't seen that, that's fine. Okay, can you give an example where it's sort of neither local max nor local min? Similar type of example. The one-sided derivatives don't exist. It's neither local max nor local min. Just change the exponent. Next to one-third. One-third? Yeah. And the point of interest is zero. In this case, when you take the derivative, it will be positive on the immediate left and positive on the immediate right. And at the point, the one-sided derivatives will both be going to infinity. Okay, so you'll get f has neither local max nor local min at zero. Okay. Now, I haven't considered all cases, but I could construct similar example where it's strict local max instead of min 40. Right? I just put a minus in front. Okay. Strict local max. And I could construct a few other types of examples. But the upshot is that the first derivative test can be used in some situations where the derivative doesn't exist. Both types of reasons. One is whether one-sided derivatives don't exist. And the other is whether one-sided derivatives do exist, but are not equal. So the first derivative test is applicable at situations where the derivative at the point doesn't exist.